Hey guys, it's Dirk and welcome back to The Berg Show. Today we're going to look at the power of a strong partnership. So I got to sit down with Dave and Josh and learn how these two mid 30 year old entrepreneurs built a $300 million business. Now Dave and Josh have a very unique approach to business. It's not just about the dollars. They truly take a holistic view at what they do, truly looking at how can they care for people and build stronger community with their clients, their tenants, and their team. Now, one of the really unique things about Dave and Josh is they have been business partners for 10 years. It's not very often where you actually find business partners that have been in business that long, especially two younger guys. So this is really intriguing to me, and I got to sit down with Dave and Josh and interview them about their approach to partnerships and why they think their partnership is successful when others fail. So we're sitting here with Dave and Josh and we're in Atlanta and I'm, I met these guys uh, about six weeks ago, maybe two months ago, something like that in Colorado and uh, we're doing a training up there. Um, by the way, like I don't know who it was, I think it was uh, Matty A told me a couple years ago actually that I should get to know you guys so I'm, finally, I'm glad that finally happened. But um, one of the things that really stuck out to me like right off the bat is that you guys said you've been partners for 10 years. And so I wanted to just pick your brain a little bit about, you know, you guys, um, really because you guys are kind of mid thirties and being partners from, you know, getting older. for 10 years, yeah. <laughs> late thirties coming soon. <laughs> so it was better in year one when we were in our late twenties, that was way better. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, so let's, I, I want to kind of just like pick your brain about, for you guys, especially being so young and being in partnership for 10 years already and working together, and you guys do big business, you guys do a lot of deals, you guys have a great company here. What are, I just want to dive into kind of the dynamics of like your partnership and just learn from you guys, because that's one thing that I get a lot of questions about is, um, you know, people jumping into partnerships and then all of a sudden things don't work out. And it's kind of like, <clears throat> some people told me, look, stay away from partnerships they just don't work out things like that so um you guys already shared several things this morning that um that clearly show one thing that you guys are doing like you're highly focused right but i mean like what would you guys say is like the starting point of a great partnership commonality you have to like the people you're going to be a partner with and it can't be just the hey we both like making money so we're going to go do that together that doesn't work you have to have, there's got to be some kind of bond of like, hey, I like this person, that we can work together, we have common interests, and then we will make a good team going forward. We can't both do the same thing. you got to kind of divide and conquer and have trust in the other person that they're going to go do a good job at whatever it is that they're, they're going to do and understand that they're probably, the reason they're doing it is because they're better at it than you are, uh -huh. which most people in a leadership role it's sometimes tough to understand, especially in your smaller company growing. You know, you're going to say, like, look, other people are better. So just let them be better and let them do it. Yeah, I think complementary skill sets is a big part of it and also, the, you know, a common drive. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we, we've seen different partnerships with, you know, whether there's a big age discrepancy or, uh, or even, even a wealth disparity between the partners um, where the, the drive is just different. If you're a different life stage or a different wealth stage in your life, that you have different risk tolerances, and um, we, you know, we were able to basically get married at a very similar life stage, um, and take similar, we're comfortable taking similar types of risk, at at a point in time that uh, made sense for both of us, and so it, it really it propelled our growth and our working together. Yeah, because I mean, you guys, you guys are really kind of in sync in your life stages. I mean, like, you know, you've, you've got the picture back there of your firstborns, and they're what three days apart. Two. Yeah. Two days apart, right? So I mean, you guys truly have been really kind of in sync with you know kind of how you guys have been developing out not just your business but your life as well. Yeah. Um, okay. So how did you guys like figure out you know what you're really good at, and what you're really good at? Like, did that just kind of come from trial and error? Or did you guys from day one say like, hey, I'm going to focus on this and you focus on that? Like, what did that look like? I think it was from day, you know, we worked remotely as partners when we first started. Mm -hmm. So people had to divide up kind of how we we're going to do things, especially working remotely. So it's like we had a lot of software on the real estate side. We had investor communications and we also had to travel and go out of town to work on stuff. So we had to, we had to split that up based on like, hey, what part can you do right now? And what part can 
the other person do in the time being. We, uh, we both had jobs when we started, so we uh, were balancing that. We didn't have any kids at the time, so all we had was a wife and a job. That was, life was a whole lot easier. Yeah. At that point, that wasn't too hard to juggle anything. And uh, but anyway, had to, we had to just kind of figure out who could take which piece in the time being, whether they liked it or not. It's like, look, it all has to get done. There's no, it wasn't like, oh, we only have to do the glamorous parts and all this other crap that has to get done. It's like, well, there's still only us, so we got to do it. Uh, but then building, I think as you do that, you build your skill sets of what you like doing, mm-hmm. what provides you the most sense of satisfaction, yeah. and then uh, ultimately what you become good at doing. So, I mean, but over time, did that has that evolved? Have you guys like really been able to kind of get in your lanes, or was that defined pretty early on? And probably about three years ago, we, we, we said, listen, where, where do we want to be in five, ten years? Like, if we can only work on one part of the business, what would it be? Or, or one, 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 part of, uh, one piece of it. Um, and we kind of divided up our roles saying, that, you know, Dave, Dave really likes the physical real estate component and the operational aspects around that. Mm-hmm. And I really like the re- relational aspects of the people involved in in, in, in really the deal and in, in the invest in the investor side and the lending side, so when we say kind of like let's put out this kind of lofty fuzzy, you know, he likes the physical, I like the relationships. How does that actually play out into our day to day work? And then we just kind of started, okay, this is a physical thing. You take this one. I'll, I'll step out of it. Hey, this is a relational thing. You take this one. I'll step out of it. Uh-huh. And we, we we as we as we did that more and more, we kind of diverged a little bit more in our roles. And then kind of check back in, and as as the years have been, and weeks and months have gone by, we you know we we've kind of we diverge a little bit further, but we're constantly kind of getting pulled back in, because I still like the physical side, and he still likes the relationships too. Yeah. It's just not necessarily where we want to be focusing. Call it eighty percent of our time. Yeah. The other twenty percent, we we have a lot of overlap. So one thing you guys said this morning is that um, hey, there's you guys have sometimes you can't agree on like what we need to do tomorrow, but like you guys have anchors out there for hey what are the commonality things that we want 40 years from now right and and i think like that's um i think it takes time to develop that and it takes time to to keep that alignment like what does it look like for you guys like when when you get to i'm just assuming there's got to be times where you guys may get stuck on some stuff and and it's not just like a day but i mean do you guys have differences that take you so many weeks or months to kind of get over and get back in sync or do you guys find that you can get back in sync pretty quick when there's a disagreement or a different view months is months is too long like eventually like so you got to just make a decision yeah. and go with it at some point and understand that hopefully especially in a partnership that each partner is making a decision that best aligns with where you want to want to get to and if that specific decision doesn't work out it's like that's okay learn from it let's just not do that again yeah. But we can't wait. We can't wait. We can't wait months to do really anything. Uh, too much happens on a on a weekly basis that it's like we we gotta we gotta make the decision and go with it. And no, if the other person doesn't say no, then that essentially means yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It, 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 yeah, it's really. Yeah, so it, it, I think that's that's probably the best statement. It's really that implicit trust factor that listen, nobody, neither one of us is trying to hurt each other. Yeah. And is trying to hurt the business. We have the best interest of each other and the business in mind. And as long as you trust that, then you can go along with a lot of the decision making, a lot of and a lot of the processes to, to get to the decision. Um, that there's there's usually ample opportunity to speak up and say, stop. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, if it, without saying stop, yeah. someone's gotta go. <laughs> if one, if one of us doesn't do it, the other one's gonna do it. Well, I mean, yeah, it's important because you have to keep things moving along, right? Especially you guys that do so much time-sensitive work, especially in execution of your deals, right? So if you delay in your decision, you may miss out on a great opportunity, right? Yeah. Um, well, you guys said something really good. Um, you, you said that, like, there's, there's that implicit trust that, you know, each person is just trying to do the best that they believe for the business and for the partnership, and it's not, um, hey, that person's doing something malicious or something to harm me, and I think from a lot of that I've seen in partnerships, like people take things very personally and it's almost kind of like you against me instead of like, hey, how can we do this together? I think it's almost kind of like the same kind of thing in a marriage, right? If, if you're taking everything personally and, oh, you know, he's doing that, she's doing that, whatever it is, like people take it too personal. But if, if it's kind of like truly believing that, hey, we're in this for the long haul, then you can overcome a lot of those things, right? Absolutely. Definitely. 
Yeah. All right. So what? Um, how do you guys resolve conflict? I mean, if you guys are kind of like, you know, at it, like, how do you guys? Does does it ever get heated between you guys? Like, do you yeah, ever like, I mean, want to talk to you or see I, you? Or? I wish we resolved it by playing golf, but that doesn't always happen. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, that's a good Boys, one. You always yeah. win. <laughs> Normally, that's a good one. But uh, but no, I think I think resolving conflict comes back to being friends and, and doing stuff that you enjoy doing together. Uh, and remember, like, why why do we even start doing this in the first place? So what do you, what do you, what do you guys do? To, to we try and play golf. <laughs> yeah, we play so, golf but, go to the farm. Yeah. yeah, light things on fire, shoot guns. Yeah, and go for a hike. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I mean, you have to get away from the business side of it and reconnect with like, hey, why you guys like have commonality in the first place? Yeah, right. yeah. And a lot, it's it's hard to solve problems like staring at a whiteboard. Uh-huh. A lot of you know doing that is a good way to figure out kind of what the problems are, but I think both our personalities are more like, okay, let's talk through this thing and then let's go do something else, and then when we come back to it, that's when we're gonna know like what the solution is. We'll come up with some ideas to it in, in the moment, but then we've got to step back from it and, and then come back and say, okay, we'll go with this one, let's do it. Well, and a, a lot of the day-to-day, there's not a whole lot of new problems. Mm-hmm. You know, we've defined a lot of the, you know, the, the problem A has solutions one, two, and three. Yeah. Um, you know, when we solved it last time by using number one, does that still apply for this time? Um, so a, a lot of our, you know, a, a lot of the discussion is... Okay. But that's like we're buying similar assets all the time. So, you know, we're, we're, we're doing a deal right now. It's our 34th deal. And we ran into a problem we had on our sixth deal. And we, stars align, whatever. Our manager on the 34th deal is the same one from the sixth deal. Mm. So I'm like, Brian, look, we're, we got to do the underground plumbing lines from the toilet, just like we did on deal number six. He says, oh, I remember exactly what that is. He knows what to tell the residents. We know the timeline. We know what it's going to cost. We know how to fix it. It's not enjoyable. Mm-hmm. We still have to pay for it. It was unforeseen. But we know what we're doing. Yeah. So, But we only are able to do that because the 34th deal was very, very similar. It's 100 units versus 106 units. It's like it's very similar size, similar construction, similar asset. So that consistency and the, the knowledge we've gained is, is transferable from deal to deal. And if we switched and we were like, Find something totally different, we wouldn't have that. We would have had to go figure out a new problem. So. Well, and, that, and that's something you guys were, I mean, you actually started challenging me this even on the phone a week ago, right? Hey, Dirk, tell me about your world because it seems like there's too much going on, like there's a lot going on, right? We talked about it this morning again. Um, you guys are absolutely focused, right? And tell me about that. Like, tell me how that's driving success in your life and, and how maybe you've seen or learned from other experiences or seen from other people that start diversifying too quickly, start focusing on other things and, and what comes from that? Part, part of it is we just need a clear story of what we do. When people ask you like, hey, what is it that you do? And if you're like, well, I do this, 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 and this. We're like, man, that guy, we're not sure what's going on. But when we tell them, hey, we buy two-story brick apartment buildings with exterior entrances built in the 1970s, it's like, that's pretty clear. A lot of people like to equate it to like athletes and sports. Like, you don't see Peyton Manning going out there and learning how to run. Mm-hmm. He doesn't run. There's a reason he doesn't run. He's a really good quarterback. He also yeah. doesn't play defense. There's a lot of things he doesn't do, do, do well on the football field, and he's really terrible at. There's one thing that he does really well. He throws the damn football. So, you know, we're, we're, we kind of equate ourselves to the same thing. It's like just focus on, that, on, on the one thing that we do really, really well and just do it over and over and over again. He's thrown a lot of passes. Yeah. I think his record just got broke, right? I'm not yeah, sure. touchdowns. Yeah, I know Drew Brees got 500 touchdowns, yeah, but yeah. I don't know. I don't know who's got more. I think it was passing yards. Was, oh, yeah, uh, passing yards. Yeah, that's yeah. 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 All right. So, um, doing one thing and doing it over and over and over, getting really good at it, because uh, you know, Davey said like, "Hey, this is where, this is where we start really understanding that we're not going to have a hundred different challenges. We're probably going to have five challenges. You know, hundred times. A hundred times, right? And as you guys are focusing on that, you guys are building like an ecosystem around what to you guys To solve are those problems. Right. Most effectively, quickest, best response time, less, least amount of impact to the residents in the, in the property itself. Like, one of our stupid little problems, just another one on the list, is uh, we have a lot of concrete, a lot of sidewalks around our properties. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, these are trip hazards as they get older. You know, most, most of our concrete's 50 years old. Mm-hmm. So tree roots and all that stuff is going to break up concrete and just the age of the concrete. 
our lenders, and not only do we have a liability issue, so insurance requires that or they're well maintained and there's no bumps in them, but our lenders also require it. And there's annual insurance and lender inspection. With the volume of properties we have, we have a full-time crew that just goes around and repairs concrete. Mm-hmm. That's all they do. They just repair concrete. And, and just, just for you guys, or do they yeah, do no, that? No, just for us. We know what it costs on a weekly basis to support that, and there's an endless, we have an endless amount of sidewalks. Yeah. So it's, you know, you think about it, we got over 50 deals, so it's really every week we can go to a property and find, let's fix the sidewalks here, the dumpster pads, or the concrete flumes, or whatever it is. Let's just keep fixing them. And just add that into the cycle and schedule them out and have them knock out all the repairs. So it, it helps remove that problem that if we only, you know, if we had to go figure it figure it out every time, it's like, oh, this is challenging. But no, our, our crew is awesome. Yeah. They do great concrete work and they know exactly what they can do in a week. So they know how many days it's going to take to do any of the problems that we're facing and what to do. We don't have to bid out jobs. We don't have to quote things. It's We have, we have the crew. We know their cost. Yeah. So is that the same, like the, the tree trimming, is that the same, like you guys kind of went after that because you guys had such a big need to trim trees and everything else yep. at your properties? We, we want to annually inspect our properties and make sure we don't have dead or dying trees that are over a building. Mm-hmm. If it hits the building, we've got a big problem. Let's just take it down ahead of that. And the even bigger risk is for a mobile home. Yeah. If, a, if a branch touches a mobile home, you have to, you're basically losing the entire home. Mm-hmm. All the, you know, all the residents' content, contents inside and hopefully nobody gets injured. But it's not like they're... They're not built foundationally like a like an apartment complex is that a right. branch will take one out. Mm-hmm. So um, we you know we 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 are very sensitive mm-hmm. to trees Especially and branches I, around mobile homes. Again, properties built in 1970. That tree is now 50 years old. Yeah. It's a big tree. That's not like a little bush. Right. You know, it's a you know it's not like a 80 foot oak tree or something that's 10 feet from a building. Things scary. It could go right through anything. So we look at the tree part as just another part of like, let's go out there and, and proactively solve our problems because we know they're coming and and make it as painless on the property as we can. So I want to I dive into this because one thing I was impressed is like you guys have a really kind of like holistic view about your property. I mean, uh, the same kind of thing um, earlier when, when I asked you, okay, what made you guys start um, going into like the mobile home, you know, asset class? And it wasn't, you guys said, hey, it was never like a, hey, it's not never a, a play of like, hey, let's let's go into a different asset class. You guys really understood your business well enough and said, you know, hey, we want to really cater more to the customer that we're already dealing with, and this is somewhere else that they would be living, right? And you said your your operators already understood how to work with that type of person, right? So um, it's it seems like you guys have a, a really like deep understanding of like the business that you're in, that it's not just about, you know, bricks and mortar it's not it's not yeah. just about that but you guys truly connect with like okay who you guys are providing you know housing to and, and just like you don't you don't call it a, a unit you call it a home right because you guys are looking at like every single unit is somebody's home right so talk a little bit about like your your partnership and your understanding of kind of like the holistic view of your your yeah, mo- you know most multifamily dwellings like if you have a couple hundred units that's a very very large property and there's not that much sense of a community there most of ours are smaller our largest one is 220 units our smallest one right now is 13 units when you live in a place that only has 13 other residents there you know who they are mm-hmm. right it's not it's not a surprise when someone comes home late you know what time they're going to work so ours are very much a sense of community that's uh there mm-hmm. and so our operating teams and our managers cater to that sense of community that we're trying to build within a within a complex and i get to, that involves getting to know who the residents are what their schedules are how do they how do they want to communicate with our team members and what makes them happy and keeps them excited about staying at a greenleaf property so going with so uh, a, lo- a lot of that came from when we started the business and you know dave and i were the property managers we're the leasing agents we're the maintenance guys you know and initially, we, we really didn't understand the level of personal interaction we would have with our residents and, and the fact that this, this is our home. This isn't just a rent payment going into our bank account and producing returns. Mm-hmm. Um, when, we, you know, when we were physically in their units, fisting them for them, showing in and getting the gratitude back for taking care of the place and improving the place, that was when we were really kind of more deeply connected and said more foundationally, like, this is the business we want to run. We don't want to be trading dollars or transactions 
Um, we've gone to New York, we've interviewed investment funds to basically partner with and basically just be a transaction machine. We decided that's not, that's not the business we wanted. Yeah. We wanted to have personal relationships and connections with every, every, from our residents to our employees to our investors. And we want to keep it that way. Um, we, that was a very conscious decision. And yes, we've probably, we, we could have grown tenfold of where we are today, but we would have a very different business. And frankly, I don't think we'd be as happy with the business we have. Mm -hmm. um, so we very intentionally chose the business and really the scale and the scalability of the business um, that we have right now. So how, I'm curious, like, how do you guys like define success? Like, if you if you're kind of like on this path of, um, you know, where you guys are looking at like 40 years down the down the road, like, how how are you defining success today? Success today versus success 40 years from now. No, yeah, like on <laughs> today, on the, I'm hoping I get to my accounting today. meeting and it all goes smoothly. Yeah. <laughs> so that would be success for a Tuesday, but that's success every Tuesday is making sure that that accounting meeting goes smoothly and the team can figure out as many of the problems as they can for that meeting. And if that can get better and better on a weekly basis, we're just continually becoming more successful as an organization. Well, overall success is building an organization that can you know, last the t test of time mm -hmm. and provide people with an opportunity for them to grow and also enable our residents have a good home that they know is gonna be taken care of for a long time. Now, whether that means we can do that with 3,000 units or 30,000 units, that's, that'll be just a byproduct of how successful we are in executing our mission. Yeah, okay. yeah organization, I, I, I completely agree with everything you said. To complement it, really more organizationally, the, the, the more that the organization can do without Dave and I being in the picture is, is really how we gauge the strength and the power of the organization. Uh, right now, we're about 100 people. Mm -hmm. And I would say about 70, 80% of our day-to-day -day jobs have been replaced. It's, it's really the 20, 30% of the shit hitting the fan problems that we have to dive back in and get involved with. The more and more we remove ourselves, the stronger and more secure the, the, the organization is for everyone involved from the resident to the employees to the investors. And that's really our ultimate goal and how we gauge the success is how much we're in or out of it. Yeah. So um, in your in your partnership, I mean, it sounds like you guys do like do you guys do everything together? I mean, as far as that, if you're looking at taking on other projects and one says yes and one says no, does does one ever go out on their own and kind of take it down, or like you guys are like, hey, everything we do, we're gonna do as partners? Yeah, it's all it's all together. What have you seen as some of like the the pitfalls? Like, have, did you guys study other partnerships, or are you guys just like, hey, we're just gonna focus? We on have other friends that started partnerships. Yeah. Yeah. It's been entertaining. Yeah. Um, Learning from other people. I mean, I, I, obviously, we, we have great mentors and coaches that we met throughout the years that you know give us guidance, and we got, we got to hear their stories, and also just watching our other peers go through, and you know, they're, they're the same struggles that we've gone through, but we've come out the other side, and maybe they they didn't have the same luck. Okay, what's the difference between you guys coming out the other side and them not being able to do that? I would say. Um, very wide array of what their visions were and where they were in their life stage, right? Like you've got, you've got very distinct thing, hurdles in life. Hurdles, maybe bad, but like getting married, having kids. Those are two like big life-changing events mm -hmm. that as much as you don't want to admit it, it changes kind of like what your direction and your, in your path in life is. Yeah. And then also like what your vision is for what you want for your family and for your career. Like if those things start deviating too far, then it's going to be really hard to have a partnership with that. Uh, so we've seen people that, you know, one partner is, is flying solo, very different pace of life than one that's got a couple kids. And he's like, look, I, I'm like, I can't go out all the time. I, gotta, I want to go home and see my kids. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been, you know, we have a very similar life path that we're on, so that's helped tremendously. Um, okay, so how, how often are you guys, obviously, you guys, your, your office here is even kind of a suite style to where you guys have kind of this, this space where you each have your individual offices, but obviously no doors in here. So it's kind of like everything that's said in here is like open communication. Like, I mean, are you, you guys seem like you're just open book with each other and everything, very transparent. And you said when you guys started your business, that was one thing that was really important to you is the transparency of like how you guys operate, right? So is that just something that... When, yeah. when direction changes, like, do you guys kind of figure out, okay, how to how to navigate that together? Or, 
I mean, is is your future well, we haven't really so had, clear that you've you know, never we, we haven't really had a lot of change in direction. We've been buying the same type of real estate assets since we started. The what we've added into the mix is we've added we've added the mobile home segment. We're adding a triple net lease segment, but those are things we sat down and consciously went through and evaluated together to make sure is this the right is this the thing we want to do. And on top of those, we add in ancillary sub companies that are helping to support our growth. But those are really there as as we grow the apartments, mobile homes, and triple net lease segments of our business. So how you guys are that's only a lot three of that's only three things in the history of our partnership uh-huh. that have been directional decisions. So you get you guys are plugged into um, a lot of people that you know do a lot of different things, right? How do you guys stay focused on what you're doing? Because I'm sure other people bring you opportunities all the time, right? How do you guys stay so focused on what you're doing? Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> but we, we, I mean, we define an operating box. For for me, I'm a very tactical guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm I'm infantry, um, so I like to as quickly as I can define the box and then charge as quickly as possible inside that box. Mm-hmm. If if the box is too wide, it's really hard to find. It, it, and we have to have a discussion all the time. If the box is too narrow, we can't find opportunity. So we we basically sit down. We agree on kind of what is that box. And then it, anything that falls in that box, we're both comfortable with. And we yeah, agree. Let's that. go do it. And then we just do it. What else? Like, if, if you guys were to give, uh, let's say there's two, two people that are thinking about going into partnership, like, what would you each say? Just a couple of like things, like, hey, this is most important if you want to experience success in your partnership. You know, we're, we're constantly, constantly trying to make ours better. And we're always looking at, like, hey, what is this other group doing that? Why do they have a better partnership? How is it lasting longer? And what are they doing? They all have a clear vision of what what the timeline is and what they're going after. They have it written down, it's documented, it's, it, it's in a binder, and it's very, very well comprehended. So the better that is, the better the partnership's gonna be. Awesome, so clarity of vision, timelines, I mean, just really having it documented, like there's no guesswork involved. It's like, hey, here's, here's where we're going, this is what we're doing. Yep. Okay, awesome. What would you say? Uh, that combined with, uh, you know, the, the golf? Yeah, golf. <laughs> golf. Golf seems to be a really important <laughs> thing. <here. laughs> I mean, that, that combined with um, r- really the, you know, the 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 common uh, the common good, yeah. right? That you know what you're what you're doing is not only good for you, it's good for me, mm-hmm. and what I'm doing is not only good for me, but it's good for you, and 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 just having that you know, that that a lot of that is brought through you know either a fami- a solid family background. You know, I have four brothers. He has he has two he has two sisters, um, or you know, a church or a synagogue background, or and really anything where you're, you're all working towards a common good, or or, or an athletics background. Yeah. Um, but be, basically, be able to be able to lay down and sacrifice your, yourself for the common good, mm-hmm. um, and understanding that, and, and also um, you know, ha- having having a lot of clarity that the other person is going to do that for you, and you're willing to do that for them. As, as much clarity as you can. Yeah, because there's, there's got to be a high level of trust, right? Because if, if you can't trust that, hey, this person's going to bat for me and they've got my back, then you're going to feel guarded and constantly questioning, like, hey, is this person trying to screw me? Are they trying to, you know, go on their own? I mean, what, what the deal is? So, I mean, you guys seem like just to have a really high level of trust with each other, a high level of understanding of what you're doing, where you're going, what it looks like, and that allows you to operate with way more speed and, you know, decisiveness, right? Right. And something you'll see on, Sh- I, I'm a big fan of Shark Tank. Uh-huh. So uh, something you'll see on Shark Tank is they're always pushing the entrepreneur. They, a lot of them have day jobs and they're doing this on the side. Is they want their they want their entrepreneurs to be all in. Yeah. All in to what the, to that one cause. Mm-hmm. The, and and that's something you know day, I, we talked about this earlier that we're 100 percent in and we continue to be 100 percent in. Um, you know what if I were talking to to you know two guys that were looking to be partners in the future is like, are you both of you guys going to be hundred percent in? Because if this one's 80% and this one's 50%, you're, there's a disparity. There's a disparity. If, if you're, if one's 80% and the other one's hundred percent, it's not going to work. Um, so it's, it's really tricky if you're not coming in at the same level and planning to operate at the same level, you're just going to point fingers all the time. Yeah. Full commitment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one last thing, um, Again, like when it comes to diversity, I think there's so many people that want to diversify very quickly, right? 
And you guys challenged me in, you know, some of the things that I wanted to come learn from you guys, like, hey, why are you even thinking about learning that? Like, how does that fit into your core business, you know? And one thing you said is like, look, I, I wouldn't even think about diversity until you maybe you're hitting 150 million, you know, in, in net worth, right? So that that's very counterintuitive, right? I mean, a lot of, you know, a lot of people seem to think like, hey, diversify, diversify, diversify all the time. But again, then you're always into something new and trying to figure it out. And it takes your time, effort, energy, everything. No, yep. no one built wealth in diversity. Yeah. There's not a, I don't think there's a single person in history that's ever built wealth by diversifying. So if you're looking, at, if you're looking to protect what you already have, uh -huh. diversity is great. Yeah. But you're not necessarily growing it. You're not necessarily building it. You're just protect. You're, you're, this, that's a yeah. defensive play. Diversity is defense. You want to play offense. You single. You, you focus on one thing. Yeah. That's, that's, that's Yeah. Yeah. We we don't have we didn't have that much to protect when we first started. So <laughs> <there was no laughs> <point>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and one thing I asked you guys is like, hey, since um, as you guys have become more successful. I built a much bigger business, you know, have you become um, more conservative and kind of like more risk adverse? And, and you guys said like, no way, like, I mean, we're, it's actually given yeah. us the confidence to really. Yeah, we feel, we feel much more confident in yeah. tackling problems as long as they're deal with the assets that we invest. If we had to go tackle a problem in like shipping, we don't know nothing about that. It would be like, yeah, this sounds terrible. Yeah. But in, in the, asset classes that we go after and the things that we focus on, we feel very good at solving the problems that come up in those. Because a lot of them, we, we're prepared for them, we have a team in place to handle them, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we know what we're looking at. Yeah, so it, it, I mean, with that in mind, we're actually reducing the risk. Yeah. So we're taking less risk than we did 10 years ago, because we're tackling the same problem from 10 years ago, yeah. but now with all the resources and knowledge that we've had over the last 10 years. So we're, so we're not taking the same risk, but it's the same we're tackling the same problems. Yeah. yeah. Same problem with lower risk. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's awesome, man. So I, I would I would just kind of sum it up as you guys saying like, hey, have extreme clarity, right? Have extreme focus and, you know, again, like make sure you trust each other and you're all in. Yeah. Yep. I think it's fair. Very cool, man. Um, well, Josh, Dave, thank you so much for just kind of like this quick little interview. Like I, I, I always find it fascinating when, when people have great partnerships because it's, it's not that common. Right. I, I mean, a lot of people, I mean, do you guys have any idea like what the percentages of, of partnerships will break up? Right. I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't no good like, soundbite yeah. on that one. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it, it's really cool when, when it's, it's something I like to learn about, right? Because I think it's, it's yeah. I enjoy partnerships. I think it's really cool. So I want to learn to, you know, how to, how to add longevity and, you know, fulfillment from, from partnerships. So thank you guys for just sharing a little bit about, you know, your story and, and uh, your knowledge on partnerships. Of course. Thanks. Awesome. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of The Berg Show. Please be sure to tune in each week for new episodes and please like and share our content if it brings value to you.